What's going on? I'm Johnny Reader and this is JCR Acoustics and today I'm going to be talking about this. This is a 3D printed Bluetooth speaker that I designed a little over a year ago and have been 3D printing at home and selling on my website ever since. But today I'm going to be sharing with you how I designed it, some of the things that you want to take on board when doing a speaker and also some of the interesting things that I learned about 3D printing doing this project. I'm also going to be sharing all of the CAD files and all of the components I've used for free on my website and down in the description. So if you want to have a go at making one of your own, then you'll be able to do so, or at least take some of the tips and things away into your own design. So when designing this, I had a few things in the back of my mind that I wanted to achieve with it. One, I knew I was gonna sell it as a kit. I wanted this to be a fun experience and potentially a learning experience for someone to put together at home themselves. So that meant that everything had to fit together nicely and everything had to be sealable, connectable, using just a screwdriver. I didn't want there to be any special tools needed and I also wanted to keep the electronics simple so you didn't need a soldering iron or anything like that. So as well as making it simple for the end user, it also had to be simple to print. That meant making sure each component didn't need any support material so it could print quickly and there wasn't any need for any kind of post-processing on my half. The most challenging aspect was probably the electronics because to get something off the shelf that is all plug and play using different components doesn't really exist and that was the biggest pitfall. The fact that I personally had to solder components here myself at home so that when it came to the end user, they could just use the plugs that I'd soldered on and connect everything together. So that was pretty time consuming and it's one of the reasons once they've all sold out on my website, I'm not gonna be producing them anymore. But as I say, you will be welcome to use the plans yourself. The other thing and probably the most obvious thing is it had to sound good. I wanted it to be a pretty decent speaker and comparable to other ones that are currently on the market in a similar form factor. The most difficult thing you'll come up against when doing something like this yourself is obviously when a company develops a, a product, whether it's a speaker or anything else, they have economies of scale on their side so they can use higher end materials, they can use better sounding drivers because they're gonna be producing so many of them, they can get it cheaper. So when you come to do it yourself, it doesn't always work out cheaper than if you were to go out to the store and buy something, but at least you're gonna be learning something and you're probably gonna have fun doing it. When selecting the components, I went to places like Alibaba and eBay, and I tried about eight different drivers and about four different amplifiers just to see what worked best in this form factor. So the ultimate balance I went for was to get a good full range sound, but also have the portability and the ability to work off a single lithium ion. So within this, the main components are the lithium ion battery, the charging circuit, which is USB-C, and that basically keeps our battery safe, stops it from overcharging, stops it from over discharging, and means that it will supply power to the amplifier. The amplifier has the drivers connected to it, and I also included an additional switch, which means that it can be accessed and turned on from the outside. The charging board had two LEDs, and I just put two small holes that went through the end of the casing so that you can see them when it's charging. So when designing a small speaker, most people and most designers will go for what is called a sealed enclosure. This means that the air that is inside is sealed and can't escape. The alternative to this, or one of them at least, is a ported design where there is a hole in the back or wherever and it allows the air to move freely inside and outside. This will typically offer a deeper and louder bass response, but when you're at this kind of size, this kind of form factor, sealed is better, punchier, and is generally the way people go, especially if you want it to be in at least a little bit waterproof or water resistant. So doing that with a 3D printed design is surprisingly difficult. My first iteration of this used BluTac um, to try and create those seals, 
But the problem with that was when it came for the user to put it together, it's not a nice sort of build experience. You know, you're rolling up Bluetech, it doesn't feel very professional or high end. This led me eventually to experiment with TPU. So TPU is a 3D printable material, but unlike PLA, which is hard when it's set, it's a more rubbery finish. And so I use that to create the seals around the drive units, around the charging board, and also around the switch. So that was quite fun to experiment with. And ultimately it did get a pretty good seal and meant that I could do away with the Bluetech, which sort of enabled me to get what I wanted to do with the whole build experience. Finally, I wanted it to have a minimalist design. So it's fairly simple. It will fit in pretty much any environment. And it's also pretty rigid and strong because it's got the outer casing and an inner casing that slides into it. Main reason being it meant I could print it without any support material. And that means that you can sort of throw it about, throw it in the backpack, and it is truly portable. The final result with the sound is actually pretty good. I mean, it's no way as bassy as something like a Bose Mini, but in terms of the mids and highs, it's certainly comparable and it has no issue holding its own in similar size ranges. So with all that being said, I'll now take you through the design process, show you how I did some of the bits in CAD and how the electronics look and how this actual speaker goes together. So if you are printing your own at home, you know exactly what to do. Um, but if that's not enough, there is also the instructions on Instructables, which can be found from my website or downloadable as a PDF. So let's get on with it and continue. All right, so jumping into the CAD, when I'm doing a design that's gonna have multiple parts that need to fit together, I do it in a single part file. And what that means is if you go and change one of the parts right at the start of your design tree, so that's the process you follow as you build the CAD, it means everything else around it's gonna automatically rebuild. And there's a good reason for that because when you're designing a speaker, you need to have a rough idea of the volume of air that's gonna fit inside the enclosure to get the best frequency response from your drivers. But the problem with that is when you're adding components to the inside, you're obviously taking away from that volume. So you can't, you know, from the right at the start, know exactly the size the outer box, the outer casing is gonna be. So by doing it all in a single design tree, you can then go back to the, your very first part. And if I wanna now make that slightly longer, say 220 mil instead of 186, because I need it to be longer to have more volume, I can go and edit that first sketch and hopefully if I've done it right, everything will automatically rebuild and I'll have no problems, which is exactly the case. So, I mean, that looks ridiculous, but as you can see, if I wanted to, I can change the overall dimensions. So that's my reason for doing that. And then I'll just take you through the sort of general way this build works. So if you want to do something similar, hopefully there's a few useful tips in there. But the key was, as I say, to have it print without any need for support material. So the way I did that is with multiple parts. So there's the outer sleeve, and this is the part that I print in different colors. So the red, the black, or the white. And you can see that would sit flat on a build plate. And the only parts I've got in here is just to hold things like the switch and the charging board and the passive radiator. And there's no need for any support on this part at all. The second bit that goes into it is by far the most complex piece and that's because it holds all of the individual components and it's also trying to add rigidity to it to give it that portability. So you can see the drivers can screw into this, the passive radiator, and then you've got this little wall here which actually holds the middle partition. And the reason I can get this to print without any support is I've added a chamfered edge which uh, basically angles up at 45 degrees to that little lip. And that means there's no support needed for that. If we look at the holes here for where the screws go in, I've actually undersized them. So they're slightly smaller than the screws themselves. And that means as you thread in your screw, it's cutting its own thread and it actually works really well. I mean, you can unscrew it, screw it back in several times um, and it stays tight. So as long as you don't over tighten, it's quite a good solution. A part of the thought process that went in is how can I hold the electronics out the way of the drivers and the passive radiators, again, without needing any kind of support material to make a special platform. That's what that lip was for because that holds a middle partition, which can print flat like this. And this holds the battery and also allows things like the amplifier to be screwed into it. Um, I wanted to make these clips, you know, as a clip where you could push in the uh, battery to hold it in place 
but they just kept breaking off and so in the end I opted for allowing that to slide in from the side and having a snug fit rather than trying to clip it in. So that's the general parts. There's also things like the washers um, to, to create that, that seal using the TPU material. Um, but ultimately that is the majority of the design. You can see I've left a cutout for the charging port to go through, uh, cutouts for the LEDs and also for the switch. And again, to get a nice airtight seal, there will be a washer, a TPU washer there. And there's also a special washer that goes over the charging board. So once I've got my part, the speaker to basically where I want it, I then put it into an assembly. And the reason for that is I can then see how all the other components are gonna fit inside. And I've modeled things like the speakers and the passive radiator before doing the speaker, because I was trying so many different ones and I, I just wanted to get an idea of what was gonna fit best. But as I say, just make sure everything fits okay. You can see here my charging board has that TPU washer attached to it. And you know, you're not always gonna get the tolerance right the first time, but printing it this way, you know, you're gonna have a good, pretty good idea. And as I've said in a previous video, if there's a particular item that you've not got right, there's no need to reprint the entire thing. Just cut away a little section and print that and uh, see how that does. So that's pretty much it. I'll now take you through how it actually goes together.
have it. That's how you can make your own 3D printed Bluetooth speaker. If you are interested in doing this one yourself, you can either buy it as a kit from my website or download the plans and files from my website as well. Or you can just take some of the things that maybe you've possibly learned today and incorporate that in your own design. So with that being said, I wish you the very best of luck with all your future designs. And until the next video, keep designing, keep making, and keep on creating. Thank you.